we're getting ready to make a chicken pot pie for the Out of Sight Cooking Club. So, I began with two tablespoons of butter in a pan and I have an induction burner. And for those of you who are totally blind, I just want to tell you that we have a little pan guard on the induction burner and it helps to keep your pan lined up and the handle fits between it and it's suction cupped right to the burner so that hopefully it'll hold your pan in place a little bit better. It won't completely, if you yank on it, keep it from coming off, but it will keep your pan in the, in the straight position. Now I have it positioned where your handle is off to the left hand side and I'll show you this when we get to class and Haley you'll get one to probably take home to go with your burner and uh, then you can cook with your utensil with your right hand and you can hold your handle of your pan just for security with your left hand as you cook. So the first thing I'm going to do with my butter in the pan is I'm going to reach over and I'm going to plug in the induction burner and as I plug the induction burner in you're going to hear a beeping sound. So that basically tells you that the burner is on. It's a nice audible cue to let you know when I can get the plug. I couldn't get it from that angle. There we go. So you heard that they, it actually is plugged in and it's getting power. So once you do that, on the induction burner, your controls are on the right hand side of your pad. And they're little bumps, you can feel them. So the but button on the lower left hand side of the pad is the one that starts the burner. So then it comes on automatically on five. And then the button that you just push to turn it on, on the right, to the right of it, is a button that takes the heat down. It starts at five, so we wanna go four, three, two, one. And just to check for yourself, you won't hear any more beeps, so it's already on one. Now I'm gonna go to the next button to the right, which is the button furthest to the right-hand side of the cooktop, and I'm going to take it up to two, three to melt the butter. Now I'm going to grab a hold of the left hand side, the handle that I have sticking out, just so that I know exactly where my pan is, and I'm going to pull it gently up against my guard so that I know my pan is the proper position. And then I'm going to take my right hand and grab a hold of my utensil and begin to cook. So the butter, I'm going to move my butter around in the pan a little bit, and as I do, I hear it start to slightly sizzle. Okay, so we're going to melt our butter, and as we get our butter melted, then we're going to begin putting in the vegetables. Do you hear the sizzling of it? I don't know if you can hear that on the video or not. But we have it on a setting of three, and again, if you need to verify your setting, just take it all the way down to one. That's the easiest one way by pushing the button, and then you can go back up. Okay, so then I'm using my utensil to see if I feel the butter. And if I feel it click against my utensil, I'll know it's still there, but I think it's just pretty much gone. So now I'm gonna reach over to my right and I'm putting in the pre-cut celery, carrots, and onions into my pan. So just holding my spoon underneath the mouth, I'm gonna keep them from hitting the butter and splashing at me. And I always try to pour things to where if they do splash, they'll splash back towards the wall which means pull them into the, pour them into the front or the side and stand back a little bit. Okay, then I'm gonna take my spoon and make sure all the vegetables are out. So my vegetables are now cooking on three and they'll take about five minutes and I'll give it a stir about every minute or so. And, sorry, messed up. Put that on the left hand because you put that item in. Now I have all of my items lined up on my right hand side on a tray, actually a cutting board today. And as I empty those items to know that I put them in, I move them to my left hand side of myself and put them on a tray or put the empty container on a tray. So I know that I've gotten all my items in. Um, another thing I'm doing to help myself out today is for stove safety. Now it's pretty simple when you have a little cooktop like this, you know that your cooktop is there because you can actually touch the base of your counter and locate where the bottom of it is and you know it's an induction burner, it doesn't get hot. The only thing that will get hot on this is the pan and you can kind of feel up. But in addition to that, beneath me, so I know right front or in front of my pan, I have a rug. So my feet, when my feet are on the rug, I know I'm exactly in the front of the burner. So that'll help me a little bit to give me another cue. 
So any cue you can give yourself to help with will be great. So you give these a stir, and you want to stir by going around the outside of the pan, and then go back the opposite direction, a little bit more towards the center. Okay, so now we're just going to keep on letting those cook for a couple of minutes. And then I've got a utensil that will just sit right on the side of the pot, so I just put that on the side of the pot. And every time I pick up my utensil, even though I have the little guide here, I still grab a hold of my, with my left hand, the handle, so I make sure that I'm in position. Okay? And I'm just going to move my items around just for a minute. So we figured about five minutes, so we're going to shut the video up and see you back here in just a couple more minutes, okay? So we're back again, and we've been cooking our vegetables for about five minutes, and I'm going to give them a little bit of a stir. And then to my right-hand side, remember I have all my items lined up on the tray, and I've got my quarter cup of flour, and I'm going to locate the side of my pan, and if I need to use a mitt to do so, a silicone mitt, I will, but myself, I don't. And then always pour where if it goes plop, you're either bouncing off your spoon or it's going to the back so that splash goes towards the back of the pan and not towards the front or towards you okay just a little safety tip so i poured in my cup of flour and now i'm just going to give a few stirs around here again always go to the outside of the pan and push in outside of the pan push in and then just now i'm going to take my pan down as i'm putting my flour in there and I'm going to take my pan temperature down to number two. Just This is a roux we've made now. This is how you make a roux. Now it's to zero, or one actually is the lowest setting. And I'm going to go up to two, okay? So this is what they call a roux. So if anyone ever says to you, do you know how to make a roux? We've just, right here we've made a roux with some vegetables in it. And all we're really doing here is we want to cook this, it's flour and butter, or flour and fat on a low temperature so we cook the starch out of it and so that you don't taste the flour in your recipe and then that will thicken make sure we get all the flour off our spoon because I dumped it on the spoon and that will thicken our recipe for our pot pie it's going to be our gravy thickener okay so you want to tend as the recipe says always tend to your roux don't ever walk away and go well the roux will be fine because if you don't keep moving your roux from time to time, your roux will burn, and that's then becomes a brown roux, and that's not what we want, okay? Besides, it's not a real tasty. Just ignore my timer. I was playing with it. So, all right. So I'm going to turn this down to a one because it's cooking nicely, and I can actually, at this point, smell the vegetables, and I can kind of smell the roux cooking, okay? So I'm going to let it rest for a minute. And then I'm just going to give it another stir. And for about 10 minutes now, we're going to do the same thing. And we'll cut the video off, but we're doing this for 10 minutes. And keep moving your roux, tend to it, and make sure it doesn't burn, okay? Alright, so we're back. Our roux has been cooking. So the next item that we want to add into it is going to be the garlic, which I have pre-measured. And I'm just dumping in. Which I used garlic powder this time and then I'll give it a stir to incorporate it. And then the next thing that we want to add in after that is, and I should have used a perfect bowl, so if you're smarter than me, use a perfect bowl, because this doesn't have an actual pour spout on it. I'm just using a little silver container. I've already got the perfect bowls ready for a club meeting, and I didn't want to drag them back out again. So I just poured in two cups of base. So just take the perfect bowl if you have one, and everyone in the class has one, and just you know put the little edge of it on the side of your pan, and then just let that pour spout guide that into you. So we put in our garlic into our roux, and we put in our two cups of, of base, whatever you choose to, chicken or turkey. I just use the pan drippings from off of the turkey that I made. But we'll probably be using stock or base, or you will probably be using stock or base. So now then I'm just going to stir that. And as you stir it, you'll be able to feel it <clears throat> as it thickens. It's going to take a few minutes, and I'm going to turn the temperature up to hurry that up a little bit. I'm going to turn it up to 3. Okay, so I go to the far button on the right-hand side, 
and I'm going to go up two, three, okay? And you'll hear the stove start to pick up a little bit of speed as it does. Okay, so we're going to let stir that until it thickens. And sometimes I feel like <clears throat> I feel that just a little bit better whenever I use a wooden turner. So the feeling down the wooden is better when I'm trying to let something thicken. <clears throat> and it is got a flat bottom, so I'm using a flat headed spatula, which is wooden, to just move things around the pan. So I'm just making a turn around the outside of the pan, and then I'm going back and forth on the inside, real slow. Because remember, I've got a real shallow cooking pan here, and I don't want it to splash out. So I always go around a circle around the outside of the pan, not the inside of the outside edge of the pan, okay? So on the inside, go around the edge of the pan as you're stirring this, and then go back and forth in the middle, middle of the pan. And that tone that you just heard was the oven, pre I preheated it while we were off, and I preheated the oven to 400 degrees. So on standard cooking, the oven is preheated to 400 degrees, and I'm just standing here and I'm stirring. I'm going around the outside, or near the outside of the pan, and then back and forth through it. And I can feel that my roux is thickening my gravy up very nicely. So the next thing that I'm going to be doing, once I feel this is to the consistency it needs to be at, is I'm going to start <clears throat> next by adding either my turkey or my peas. It really doesn't matter in what order you do. Um, I generally add a little bit of black pepper to, to the end. And then the one thing that I've always told you is taste your food to make sure that it tastes good. So once we get all the items incorporated, we'll take a spoon, and you've got tasting spoons that are always up above your counter, and you want to taste them. So we're just about there. So I can feel the thickness start to improve as I've moved this around. So if you're consistently stirring this real nice and slow, you'll feel your spatula will get just a little bit harder as you go through the pan to move, and that's how you're going to know that it's thickened, okay? So I'm going to step away just two seconds and I'm going to grab a tasting spoon and I'm going to just make sure that this tastes right. And this is the point at which you should taste this gravy also to make sure we have the right consistency. You just want to take a little, you know, your spoon and touch it into the pan and then taste a little bit of it just to see how it tastes. So then you know if you want more salt because everybody's tastes are different. You may want more salt, you may want more of garlic, you may want, you know, you, as you learn to start cooking more and more, you'll want to change things up a little bit. So you taste it and then you see what you might need to add to it from there. All right. I took it up to four just for a minute there. And four has got it already starting to, I can hear it starting to sizzle on the bottom. So it's coming up to a boil. If you want to make it thicker, just let it cook a little bit longer. And then the items will cook together a little bit more. The water will cook off of it or the base will boil off of it a little bit more and it'll thicken up a little bit more naturally. Because we're using a roux and not a cornstarch. Cornstarch, it'll hurt it if you try to thicken it this way. But the roux, it'll just continue to thicken it. Okay, so I'm going to take it back down to one because now I'm going to add my items and I don't want it boiling like crazy because it's really starting to simmer as I add my ingredients in. Okay? I don't want them any more danger than splashing on me than I need to have. So, I'm in taking my chicken and again, coming from the front of the pan and I'm going to diffuse the splash by using my spatula and I'm just going to dump my turkey, I'm sorry, my turkey in and it's dump, I'm dumping it from the front of the pan so it splashes towards the back and then I'm just using my spatula to diffuse it. And then I'm going to use my my little turner spatula here and make sure that I got everything out of the pan and then I'm going to set that little pan off to my left hand side the turkey was in so I know then I'm done with that I've added that ingredient and then I'm just going to give it a gentle stir again always around the edges of the outside towards the outside of the pan don't know why I'm having so much trouble with that today okay and then just move it around just gently a little bit on the inside of the pan so you feel like you've got that incorporated in. And then the next item is going to be peas. So the same thing with the peas. Go from the front of the pan, 
using your spatula to diffuse the peas as they roll in so they don't go splat and dump them towards the back of the pan. So always front towards the back with ingredients so you don't get burned. And then I'll get rid of that container. And then I'm just giving them a gentle stir. And now the very last ingredient that I have to add in is the pepper. So again, just the pepper, I'm not too worried about splashing. It's just a half teaspoon of pepper. And I'm going to give it a little stir. Alright, so now I have all of my ingredients in here. Again, I'm going very gently around the edges with my little Turner spatula thing here. And I think we're good. Alright, so I'm going to shut the power to the stove off. Now, the power, even though I shut it off and I know I hit the off button, it's going to continue to work or continue the fan to run which is going to remind you your pan is still hot. Whenever the fan has cooled the pan down, the fan will go off. Another way is if you want to unplug it, but you got to remember that pan surface is going to be hot there for a while where the pan was sitting and of course since we were cooking your pan is also going to be hot. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my board here that we were using with the ingredients and I'm going to pull over my pie crust. Now for the purposes of class, what we're going to do is we're going to use pre-made pie crusts and if you want the recipe for pie crusts, let me know and I'll get you one. Because I made this one homemade, but for the class, like I said, we're not going to do that. We're going to just buy pre-made pie crusts and it will be one less challenge for you. And now I'm going to taste this and make sure it tastes good, make sure I don't have to season it. Right, so mine just needed a little more salt, otherwise it was perfect. I don't think yours will because you're going to be using base. Now I'm simply going to, the, you hear the fan is shut off on the stove so it feels the burners cooled down enough. And go to the little rack and lift your pan up or you could take your rack off. And then I'm just going to go over here where I have a pie crust and I'm going to spatula the pie crust Use the same flat spatula and check my level. Spatula a little bit more of my filling into my pie crust. And again, use the little spatula thing to level it out and see where the level is as I add it in. So this is about enough for one pan with about a half a cup for you to eat as your chef's treat. Okay. Now then, I'm going to take my pie crust for the top and I'm going to lay it over top of this pie pan with the pie crust in it and then I've got the filling in it and I'm going to lay my top crust over that. Alright, so then as you may have seen grandma do, if you could see back in the earlier years of your life or your mother, you just go around the edges and take your hand and you push down to get the excess crust off to get them both to the same size. And if it doesn't feel like at any time your pie crust is sticking together when you start form getting it together, all you need to do is take a, a brush with a little bit of water and go around where the two pie crusts meet and it'll stick together if you just put a little bit of water on it. But I think mine's going to stick because it's a nice fresh crust. So then you just take your fingers and you make a pinch go over a little bit more and make a pinch and so on and so forth until you go all the way around and you feel with your fingers where you meet your pinching from where you first started. So we're going to go all the way around the pie, okay? Alrighty, that makes sense to you? So I'm pinching my two crusts together around the edge all the way around the pie. All right, and then I'm checking underneath to make sure I got all the excess dough off, and it's it's good. So we've got a pie crust on the bottom, our filling in the middle, a pie crust on the top, and they're all sealed together. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a knife or a fork, and it doesn't really matter which, and I'm going to take the fork and I'm going to make some little holes for the steam to escape. About four would be nice. Depends upon the person. But just make some poke, take a fork, poke holes, or a knife and poke holes in your top crust 
so the steam can escape. The next thing I'm going to do is I've got an egg wash here. And I didn't put egg wash on the recipe. This is really a personal preference. It just make your pie prettier, okay? So you just take a little brush, dip it into your egg wash, and then just paint the top of your crust very gently with the egg wash. So we're going to get ready to put the pie in the oven now. It's all ready to bake. And so we have our oven preheated, preheated to 400 degrees. But just a little FYI, practice putting things in the oven when your oven is cold before it gets hot. Set your racks when your oven is cold before it gets hot. Give it a little practice. Everybody's oven is different. Find a place on your countertop where you won't have to move your feet to add extra trouble where you're comfortable, okay, and your feet are in position, that when you open your oven that you don't have to move your feet, okay? So I found a spot on my countertop. I know the edge of it's right here, and this is a good place for me to stand so I can open the door and easily get my pie and put it into the oven, okay? So that's my first thing, is I found a spot that's comfortable for me. The other thing is make sure your racks are properly. So you open the oven door, as I have, and then find where your rack is. Take your rack, pull it out about five inches, and then take your pie, put one hand on the rack, the other hand on the pie, and shove the pie onto the rack. Push the pie in, and I have a mitt on my right hand. Just so you know, that's what I was locating with. I did have a mitt. And then you shut the oven door, and then you want to set your timer. Okay, the timer went off on the oven. One half hour, perfect. So we're going to go to our oven and check it. And remember how I told you to do that? Find a point where you're comfortable on the side of the oven where you can stand both feet so you have a good stance. Get your oven mitts. You're standing off to the side where you can open the door without moving your feet around. Okay, so I'm going to use my right hand to pull the oven door down. Reaching in with my left hand, and I have mitts on both hands. I'm going to feel down until I find the rack. I'm going to take the rack and I'm going to pull it out four or five inches gently. Then with my right hand, I'm going to go over and grab a hold of one side of the pie. My left hand with both mitts again, the other side, and then I'm just going to take my pie out which is perfectly cooked, and I can smell that it is, and I'm going to set it on a trivet, a silicone trivet I have on my counter, because you never want to ruin your counter by setting a hot item on it, and then it's just going to sit there until we're ready to eat it. And I'm going to close my oven back up, and of course you always want to shut your oven off. Okay, so we have our pot pie ready to eat, so you can cut it, eat it. I would suggest letting it sit for approximately at least 10 minutes so that the gravy settles as you do with anything so that it just doesn't come flowing out of the pie. Let it rest for just a little bit before you cut it and it'll stay together a little better for you. You have a, a happy holiday and thanks kids.